I got better with the back. Like, it's not pointed at me, the lamp. So, obviously, it doesn't feel like the sun's on my fucking face, and you don't see that irritation. But at the same time, it's to this point where you can see the glow. I don't look as washed out, which is the point. Regardless, I know that Raw was yesterday, so this is probably going to seem late to you guys. All the big reviewers already said what they needed to say, especially OTRS and guys like that. However, I said I was going to do this, so I'm going to do it. You can call it something idiotic or just being a man of your word. It doesn't really matter to me. Now, this Raw, again, it's acting like what should have been going on a long time ago. It's acting like something that's building up to SummerSlam. Over, this is the last chance. Where, at least in the 1000th episode of Raw, even though I hate celebration shows, that one was good, and it achieved its purpose. It was a celebration episode. It was there to celebrate... An accomplishment, an accolade that was ascended by the WWE, and do it in a way where there's a clincher in the end. And that clincher happened, that was basically what I thought was cool, which was CM Punk and the beginning of his slow heel turn. However, when you take this into account, <sighs> Why am I doing the duck face? This isn't Facebook, this is YouTube. Anyway, this is the go home show for a major pay per view, so it has to be climactic. Yet, yeah, it's obvious that they're rushing this because of that was an episode of Raw, and a third hour just didn't do enough for some reason. So, what I'm trying to get to is they were trying to create some sort of climax for two things in particular. They already... I mean, I know that for the World Heavyweight Championship and for Chris Jericho and Dolph Ziggler, they'll have their chance on SmackDown to ascend a climax. It'll be pretty hard because it's fucking SmackDown, but they have a fucking chance. What really got fucked up was Shawn Michaels and Brock Lesnar. See, they were trying to add some sort of degree of interest. Like, Brock Lesnar was going to attack Shawn Michaels, which he did at the end of the episode. But it just didn't really get me excited to see Triple H and Lesnar face off. I mean, I already want to see them face off. That's basically good money right there. That's all you have to look forward to. However, Lesnar simply attacking Shawn Michaels isn't going to get me more invested. They're throwing in all these old, beaten down characters that basically have no life anymore. They have Michaels, they have Stephanie McMahon, they got all these people that hate each other and wish they were dead. And that's a Triple H kind of feud. It's just long, drawn-out promo segments of stuff that proves that, you know what? Triple H shows up when he's not wanted sometimes. And they're trying to make this all extreme, like when Lesnar attacked Shawn Michaels, pulled him out of the car after Michaels crashed into... We didn't crash, but... The car that Heyman was driving was basically blocking Shawn Michaels, then Lesnar went for it. And then he did the finisher after taking him to the ring. It was ridiculous. I mean, they try to be so dramatic in WWE, trying to get us invested into this because this is the only feud that's worth a damn. Both Lesnar and Triple H basically had the only match this year, the only matches this year that I really considered 
potential number one matches. I don't have. I don't see any other than them. But there isn't a number one match, a potential number one match for me that featured CM Punk, that featured Daniel Bryan. I didn't see any of that. Maybe I just don't like wrestling matches anymore. Maybe I consider them boring because when I'm watching them I'm facing all these distractions and shit and I don't feel the intensity and emotion anymore. Something in the storyline just makes it feel like whenever these wrestlers get hit that there's a disconnect. Maybe that's it. But these are the only ones where I felt the connect. And these were the more aggressive matches. The ones with the chair shots and the bleeding. And the UFC MMA style fighting and the brutality with the finishers and Hell in a Cell and Extreme Rules and shit like that. I'm not playing with anything, uh, got this really nasty mosquito bite. It, it just looks like death. I know that's disgusting as hell and you probably don't want to see it, but I showed it to you anyway. If you don't like it, you can suck my dick. But anyway, I wasn't... Nothing that they did breaking Shawn Michaels' arm. How is that going to affect this match? Is it going to make Triple H more aggressive or intimidated of Lesnar? Was there any need of this to put the Kimura lock on Shawn Michaels? I mean, it's not like Shawn Michaels is going to be the guest ref. It's not any of these guys, Heyman or what's his face, Shawn Michaels. It's not like they're going to have any purpose. So it's just another dramatic HHH food. And by the way, that promo of Paul Heyman, he says Triple H way too damn much. Try to get like a little counter for that thing, because it's like 10 to 15 minutes of Triple H, Triple H, Triple H. It was annoying. And funny at the same time. It's not something you normally nitpick, but it's something I nitpick, because it's on me. I do that. What else? Also, Punk versus Show versus Cena. Again, they should have put Daniel Bryan and made this a fatal four way. Because that would have been more interesting. But instead, they have Daniel Bryan face Kane for no fucking reason. And Kane wasn't even in this Monday Night Raw, so. It just means no purpose added on to no purpose again. Like the WWE Championship means nothing now. Why does it mean nothing? Because if you win it, then who cares? You won the WWE Championship. Right now, it's all about feuds and storylines. And you can tell, because whenever there's an interesting feud, I'm interested in the company. When there isn't one, then it's dead. Like, at least with Road to WrestleMania, even though that was a very boring Road to WrestleMania, seeing Cena and Rock go at it was very entertaining. Every week, you had these killer promos. Sometimes you had that really crappy-ass, watered-down Rock promo that shows that even Rock can't save the WWE from what it's become. And I'm an idiot for this, because I fell into the hype and thought that there's a talent deficiency that it's a talent um, deficiency there's not enough it's deflated it's inflated or whatever it's just it's very scarce and there's not enough of it that's not the thing it's just the format and everything sucks nobody is really trying to deliver and if they're trying then they must be doing something radically different were the same. Maybe they're just being too monotonous. All I know is that it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, they need to try something new. They tried shit new with adding CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and making them seem like contenders. Still, it doesn't work. So it'll be forever until we see something that really gets us into thinking, wow, this is a really fresh way to look at the company. I mean, I know that OTRS really hates the Invasion storyline, but 
hey, at least that one was really cool and shit. Like, some little things in the presentation, even though you could say, in general, it was a very crappy storyline. It ended in Survivor Series, not a WrestleMania. It didn't even last a whole fucking year. It could have been a new era and shit. And just the usage of Vince's kids, that was pointless. But at the same time, look at all the shit that we got from the Invasion storyline. Like That Survivor Series 5-on-5 five five match was really interesting. And they were trying something different. And that's the big thing. They turned Austin heel. I mean, you don't have to do anything spectacular. It's not that we want to be surprised. You can do something really stupid and shitty and a big disappointment. However, a disappointment that's entertaining and delivers from time to time is better than trying to make everyone's dreams and hopes come true and do an awesome, well-developed, well-thought-out storyline that doesn't deliver. I mean, everything's been, for the past few months, been leading up to this. Feud with Punk and Brian, all this shit, Jericho returning, it's all about who's the best in the world, it's all about how Cena lost and he has to get his redemption from The Rock, and then to do all this shit again, it's about how Punk wasn't getting what he deserves, it's about how Big Show was his joke for a long time, and now he wants to be treated as someone that's serious, it's about regret. And they could do something great with that regret storyline. But what they've been doing this week with that tag team match that featured Daniel Bryan shows that it's a, it's a good idea to travel the wrong lane kind of thing. They failed, basically. They didn't succeed at all. SummerSlam is resting on one match. One interesting match, and after that, it's all over. Although, Jericho and Ziggler could be well. I just hope they give Jericho the victory. Instead of putting Ziggler over, even though that's good for business and shit. Alright, so... That's about it. I wasn't as brutal and sarcastic as I was before. That's probably because this review is a, a lot about what they didn't do right and less about what I knew they couldn't deliver, but they did do right, but it doesn't mean a damn thing. This is about the big picture. The big picture is that everything's sort of going the wrong direction. Not that I can say I can do better and shit, but this is supposed to be very climactic and... I didn't like it. Alright. That's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. To some degree. You're just gonna stay there and watch me be silent a little longer? Just, to just like click the next video or something. I'll probably have a bunch of tabbed open for more interesting shit. Don't do this to yourself. <laughs>